For 1500 years, the City of London Corporation had shone with grace upon the lands of England and had slowly become a merchant trade and commerce powerhouse second to none, but with it came massive flocks of immigrants, peasants and those seeking to bring a better life within the walls of the city. By the 1600s, the greatly overpopulated, tiny and ancient city had become far too crowded. Many iron mills, 80,000 people burning coal to warm their wooden houses, many wharfs and boat houses, textile factories and the streets were made of mud. The streets would smell of putrid feces and urine as people were chucking it out of their houses and the slums houses were covered in black soot. Between 1603 to 1646, over 100,000 people died of the Yeshinia pestis bacterium, which persisted to remain in the city for over 100 years, known as the bubonic plague. Coincidentally and conveniently, between 1665 and 1666, over 100,000 people died again of bacterium within a year, known as the Great Plague, where a third of the city people died and almost the entire city was ravaged in a week-long fire started by an agent of Rome, Robert Hubert, who was later convicted and hanged of the crime for starting the fire, which was called the Great Fire of London and destroyed 80% of the original city. During the week of the fire, Parliament made the Sescu QV Act of 1666 law, which presumed everyone in the country was dead, and from then on, they presume everyone is dead, incompetent, and lost at sea. Basically, we are corporate slaves controlled by the crown and have no rights. Following the devastation, Christopher Wren designed the lavish streets for the very high quality buildings, 50 churches, banks, grand palaces and many important buildings that we still see today. Notice earlier how I said coincidentally and conveniently because it took London from an overpopulated slum uh, built on wharfs and boathouses and trade and commerce to the most powerful square on the planet still today which controls commerce, trade and the world's money supply 50% of the entire world's money runs through the city of London in means of derivatives which is spread out between the tax havens. The Sestui Cuvi Trust was implemented in 1666 666 by the British Crown during the Black Plague and Great Fire of London Hegelian dialectic. With both the plague and fire conveniently happening at the same time the British crown under the guise of being a good old friend, entrusted everyone's land unto themselves and presumed everyone dead given the amount of chaos. They presumed everyone dead, lost at sea, maritime terminology for the Roman papal jurisdiction, holy see, see. You were presumed dead until you declared your status as a living man. Sestui cuvi is French for, he who lives, but has other meanings as well when you look at the etymology. Seest has to do with blood lineage, and the number six, six protons, six neutrons and six electrons composing carbon-based DNA. And remember, this was implemented in the year 1666. This is a hex on humanity. Hex means six. One of a few hexes. Unum sanctum is another main one but that's a whole post in and of itself. So sestui cuvi equals lost at sea, essentially meaning incompetent or ward, subject to the crown, non-living, corpse, corporation etc. This is the birth of what we now call the straw man. Through seest, six, blood lineage, DNA they presume you to be lost at sea by default unless you establish sovereignty within the first seven years of your life. Remember, tacit agreement fully cures, becomes set after seven years. If you think about it, you shed all cells in the body every seven years, meaning you literally embodied the consent through tacit agreement, not refuting, not declaring sovereignty. This is a spiritual contract just as much as an arbitrary creation of some self-proclaimed royals given you agreed to it through tacit agreement, not refuting it. Sestui Cuvi Trust is still in play for that very reason. It has never been refuted or abolished for all of humanity, though it gets refuted on an individual level by those who awaken to their innate sovereign capacity. So in 1666 the British Crown entrusted all property of the Holy See, Roman Papacy, and the Roman Papacy laid claim to the whole world in Unum Sanctum without anyone refuting, so it became a worldwide form of tacit agreement. A spiritual contract, contraction. 
Now, everyone on Earth who operates as a corporate entity, citizen, legal name has the property still entrusted to the British Crown and Roman Papacy given they haven't declared sovereignty, meaning they are still lost at sea. C. If you established your sovereignty then you wouldn't be a corporate entity, citizen, legal name. Property tax, inheritance tax, mortgage, and any form of commercial debt is placed upon you through the Sestui Cuvi Trust of 1666 which also rules the courts almost everywhere other than sovereign tribal councils. Paying just to live is not natural, it's a paradigm the British Crown and Roman Papacy created to gain control over humanity. Mort gauge. Mort means death. Gauge measure or grip. Mort gauge equals death grip. The ultimate leverage. Not only do you have to pay that but you have to pay for the things that make your house a comfortable home such as water, power etc. And if you try to rig your own power or water as a Regis Turd citizen you will get in trouble with the state if you don't pay out the ass for inspection, licensing, claiming to be licentious, etc. Plus it wouldn't even be approved given it wouldn't be up to par with what they'd approve of given it's not state regulated, and the fact that you are licensed, licentious, incompetent via your own consent of being a citizen, lost at sea which they see as you being incompetent by consent. If they go to foreclose on your house unjustly, which happens, research farmers claims of the Midwest, and if you take it to court, you will lose as long as you are standing in court as a citizen using the legal name. You will lose, no matter how unjust it is. The only reason any citizen has ever won that type of court case is so they can spread the illusion that citizens can win when really a citizen, corporate corps has no rights. Hence these cops beating people down and not facing penalty. In the eyes of the corrupt Sestui Cuvi courts, they're just beating down corpses so there's no way they could hurt or kill them because a dead body feels nothing and you can't kill that which is already dead. Spend the energy you would spend doing that on learning your rights and how to stand as a sovereign being. They say the Roman papacy is to rule the world for 1260 years. Days and years see to interchange in terms of Bible prophecy in certain cases. All court is is settling the Sestui Cuvi trust that was declared by the papacy in 1666, Mark of the Beast. The first person to identify as the legal name while in the courtroom, maritime, admiralty jurisdiction, is responsible for paying the trust, fines, fees, penalties of any sort, due to creating joinder as trustee of the Sestui Cuvi trust via the legal, corporate name that was copyrighted by the Crown Corporation. It all hinges on the legal name that's binded to the Sestui Cuvi trust of 1666. The Edict of the Mark of the Beast that declares people who identify as the name, corporation, corpse to be legally dead and or lost at sea to the Holy Roman Sea of Corporate Commerce. The birth barn, birth certificate, strawman, is not a transparent contract and it is what all debt hinges on other than personal debt, other than debt between you and your neighbor, fam, friends, acquaintances for instance. All corporate debt. Mortgage, car payments, student loans, national debt and so on is all based on joinder to the legal name which is not a transparent contract. You sign the contract every time you agree to being that name in commerce, on a job app, clocking in at work, identifying yourself to the police, replying to mail with that name on it or verbal contract. Once again. This is a non-transparent contract and once again, usury and debt enslavement, the British, Roman status quo, has been ruling for centuries. The Roman Empire taking over before Jesus, Yeshua even came into the picture. All these centuries of compiled non-transparent agreements that have accumulated debt that we only slave over due to presumptive agreement. The only time Jesus, Yeshua used force during his ministry was to rid the money changers from the temple. Jews could only pay their tax to the temple through the half shekel, half oz coin of pure silver. This was the only coin at the time that did not have the image of a pagan emperor at the time. To the Jews, the half shekel was the only coin acceptable to God. The money changers cornered the market on them and raised the price. Then the Jews had to pay whatever the money changers demanded of them. Now they take on the guise of Judaism and run banking with it based on usury approved of by the Talmud. The birth bonds, birth certificate, legal name fraud isn't transparent. Hence why sites and channels have been taken down for delivering the truth about this contract. They copyrighted the birth certificates. Now are you saying, I am, whatever the all caps name is, is like saying, look at my painting, when someone else's name is on it. That's fraudulent and you're immediately in the wrong in the eyes of the law. Copyright infringement. The system is aiding and abetting fraud through getting you to identify as the legal name. The legal name is illegal. It is a non-transparent contract. This is not to scapegoat the British Roman Empire, because we did this to ourselves via presumptive agreement. 
The beauty is that we can undo it to ourselves. Rome is a mind state. A change of mind and a change of heart will change your reality and will cause a butterfly effect. It will spread. Being aware of the curse breaks the curse if followed by a change of mind and a change of heart. Intent steers. Free will reigns supreme. We just used our free will to hand our experience of free will over in most ways. However, free will is an innate part of who we are. If we surrender our will to the heart, compassion, compass ion, we'll be guided to sovereignty from within. In truth we are born to be alive. We were not born to be pronounced, lost at sea, and then presumed to be dead after seven years after not stating so. This creates a duality, a schism, a break in the connection, between you and your creator. Hence the statement, born to be alive, is a God-given right to do so. But since at birth, Satan's kingdom took that right away from you, they must openly tell you that it is your God-given right that you are born to be alive. Again, they use media to remind you of this, 